Welcome, dear friends from our great Northern Plains region. I'm back with two of my great friends. Um, Kirsten is still here with us, of course. We love her. And we have Stephanie back in a different capacity. And she's going to be presenting to us as we go through 2 Nephi, chapters 6 through 10. So good to be back here with you, Stephanie. Thanks for joining us. Where, where do you want to start? Thank you so much. Um, I thought I'd do a little, um, share a little thing that I've been trying to help me be a better teacher. Um, and that is, some of you have, may have seen this. And so I'm going to share my screen for just a minute. And you can see that I've written along the side. So this is um, a spirit-directed learner experience. And there's Christ-centered. Your lessons should be learner-focused. And they should be scripture based. And of course, the middle section is is where we're going for because that's where conversion happens. And then the spirit teaches the students. So what I've been doing is before my lesson, I kind of just make notes. Um, am I Christ centered? What am I doing? What's one learner focused thing and what's one scripture based thing? Mm -hmm. And it helps me balance my lessons. And I've noticed that it's helping focus on the savior better and having a converting experience. Um, and then afterwards I kind of grade myself. How, how are you doing on this, this, and this? And then I can help, help myself on my next lesson. Um, one thing that I like about what he gave us, let's see if I can get it. So this is that same chart. Um, Brother Checkett's put overview of Christ-like teaching and the colors match. So you can kind of say, oh, green is learner focused. What, are there some things there that I could that I could plug in to help my help my lesson a little bit? And then so that's another way to do it. So a little sharing there if you want a little <clears throat> self-guidance on how to improve your lessons. Any and any uh, suggestions, you guys? Yeah. And teachers, please talk to your coordinators about this. They should have things like this for you if you want it, um, because honestly, it has been I, I've been doing it for about two weeks now. And just having mine out in front of me has helped me refocus on where I need to be focused. Um, and those little helps with the color coding have been just wonderful. So thank you, Stephanie. Kirsten, anything? I agree. It's been, it simplifies it so much easier for me to look at this and, and then pick a color from the chart. But maybe that week I want to develop even better in specific and I love having a laminated one. So mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. get a copy and you can laminate it or not, I love writing out in my lesson where it is that I'm focused on that day. And if I really want to hone my skill on being Christ-centered, then I really double check and make sure that my Christ-centered parts of my lesson are evident in there. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing this. This is awesome. Yeah, I love this, the simplification of it. Mm -hmm. So if everybody would turn to 2 Nephi 9, Jacob is all grown up <laughs> and writing some scripture under the direction of the Savior. And these are such beautiful verses. So um, this week we're covering, um, or, sorry, 6, go to 6. Okay. <clears throat> we're doing 6 and 10 are both a set, uh, for Monday, if we're gonna, if you're going to teach that on Monday. And they've got some great ideas up at the beginning. But one other one that I thought would be kind of fun is to show the kids this picture and say, what is similar in all these pictures? So any, any ideas, either of you? I see. There's more than one. Yeah. Okay. I see assistance. I see holding and carrying. Thank you. Let's uh, so with the kids, I'd, I'd let them talk for a minute, but then let's go to Second Nephi six, and let's read verse six. Any, I'll read either that. of you there yet? You got it. Okay, thanks. And now these are the words: Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms and thy daughter shall be carried upon their shoulders. Thank you. Does that give you any more hints about this picture? I love that. What do you think, Kirsten? What, what are we talking about here? <laughs> the gathering of Israel, right? And how we yes. carry each other in their arms. Our and arms. the gathering of turtles. <laughs> yes, as well. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Which of these pictures is slightly different than the other ones, though? Hmm. Well, besides the turtles. I was about to say, well, 
the missionaries aren't physically carrying anybody. Yeah. But they are carrying the message of the Lord. Oh, that's a, such a great insight. Thank you. Um, that verse that you just read only mentions one group, though. Can you see which group they mention, like out, outright? Yeah, the Gentiles. Yeah, so which are the Gentiles? So are they the carriers or the being carried? So it says the Gentiles will first come to the standard, and then they shall bring thy sons in their arms. Thank you. And as Jacob's talking about, as you can see from the, the uh, section uh, introduction, that it's the Jews or the house of Israel. That what a, what a great, what does it tell you about our job in the last day, Kirsten? That we are gathering everybody. I love how President Nelson has talked about this, right? That the, the gathering of Israel is the most important thing taking place on the earth today. Thank you. This carrying is so important to the Lord. Yeah. And um, then I thank you. I, I'd probably go to chapter, t um, sorry, go to chapter 10 now. And this explains it a little bit more. And the, there's, there is six through 10 is kind of a law, a lot. So let's just pick a verse out of there. Um, why do the house of Israel, why do they need to be carried? So let's, let's read verse six. Kirsten, will you read that? Sure. Wherefore, because of their iniquities, destructions, famines, pestilences, and bloodshed shall come upon them. And they shall not be, and they who shall not be destroyed shall be scattered among all nations. Thank you. So when, when is this referring to? Do you remember historically? Well, with Israel, they, they, there's a little bit of a separation between 10 and 2, 10 tribes and 2. And Assyria, I believe, came and conquered and scattered um, in around 721 BC, and then King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon around 587 BC. And so, but not everybody, right? Because eventually the Jews were allowed to come back and there's a lot there, isn't there? It's like, it's like Jacob's trying to teach the entire Old Testament in one chapter. <laughs> yes. Here is the Christ-centered verse there. <clears throat> Let's just read seven. But behold, thus saith the Lord God, when the day cometh that they shall believe in me that I am Christ, then have I covenanted with their fathers that they shall be restored in the flesh upon the earth unto the lands of their inheritance. What does Christ have to do with this gathering? Mm. He's the whole center of it. Right? How? It's his, it's the covenant. He, because of his atoning sacrifice, any of us can even be gathered back together. Mm -hmm. And the restoration of the gospel that was brought about when Joseph Smith prayed and, and Heavenly Father introduced his son who ushered in this dispensation, right? Everything goes back to Christ and that Abrahamic covenant. Thank you. That's beautiful. One of my goals this year was to, as, as we really studied the, the introduction to the Book of Mormon, one of them was to look for covenants. Boy, just been popping out everywhere the word covenant that I never, it's like a double covenant. He's covenanted with the house of Israel, like you said, and then we've also covenanted with him to gather them back and help with that. Um, there's that great video that, that you can show the students um, from President Nelson, the one that you talked about. It's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, one I thing that I kind of went. Stephanie? Yeah, go ahead. I think it's important to know that when we talk about the gathering of Israel, it is multi-layered, right? We're, we're not just talking about gathering them back to their own lands. I think that that is mm -hmm. important. And we see that in fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant. But I love this verse in 3 Nephi chapter 9, verse 13. If we look at it under the lens of the real gathering, O oh, all ye that are spared, because you are more righteous than they, will ye not now return to me and repent of your sins, that ye may be converted, that I may heal you. The greatest gathering is to be gathered back under his yeah. arms, right? Thinking about him as that hen and him lifting his wings and saying, come unto me, gather to me so I can protect you. The land is great, but let's gather people back to Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that when we see when we look at that in Second Nephi 
6 through 10, it really is exactly what you're saying. Gathered back to the Savior through covenant. And what a great way to be Christ-centered in your lesson. Mm. To, to remind them that for these people, the land is big, but that's in, in the last days, it's to Christ. Yeah. Um, an activity that I thought might be kind of fun, and I hope you as teachers go over a lot more scriptures than this and look at the lesson, but I found a cool article called simple, 30 Simple Ways to Help Gather Israel, and here's you can look it up if you want to. Um, and it's he, they've got four little sections, live the gospel uh, as a follower, connecting, prepare yourself, and find ways to sacrifice your time. Anyway, there's 30 of them. If you're interested in that, I thought it might be fun. You could do charades with it. How how is how am I gathering Israel? Um, you could have students take selfies. Here's how I'm gathering Israel. Um, or just basically at the end, maybe share how you felt when you did. Because I think kids are like, gathering means I, I'm going on a mission. <laughs> And I think that they they can just gather all the time. And so to apply what we've learned here to bring people to Christ might be kind of fun to get them up and moving a little bit. That's fun. Anything else on this lesson you would add? I just, I like the thought of um, the invitation to do this in normal and natural ways, right? Mm -hmm. Sharing work isn't just about being on a mission with the badge, but sharing the gospel in normal and natural ways. And I love I love this 30 simple ways to help gather Israel. I think that could be really a great activity. Great. All right. I couldn't in, in the next on the Tuesday lesson, I, I couldn't resist monsters. <laughs> yeah. You got to bring a monster in when he talks about this. You got to. Yeah. Terrible <laughs> monster. <laughs> yeah. So um, um, let, let's go to second Nephi nine. The rest of the, the week is on second Nephi nine. Mm. Um, and these two monsters that Jacob talks about. I love that he has that image because they are a monster in our lives. Um, let's read it just to acquaint ourselves with it. So we're looking what the two monsters are. It's kind of, I wish I had two monsters, but it just says one monster. So <laughs> you can find a two headed monster picture. Maybe there you go. A two headed <laughs> monster. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, but I couldn't find one. So the, here, here's our monster. So I'll read this one. So this second Nephi nine ten. how great the goodness of our God who prepareth a way for our escape from the grasp of this awful monster, yea, the monster, death, and hell, which I call the death of the body and also the death of the spirit. So what a great conversation you could have with the kids on the differences between those two kinds of deaths. Anybody have any ideas about how you teach those two? Have them prepare a mini lesson for the primary. Mm-hmm. Right, because this is a primary doctrine, and sometimes we as teachers think, "Oh, they know it." Yeah, I believe our students know it as well as we think that they know it, and so for them, the best way to know it is to teach it, and so to create a little mini lesson so they can come up with puppets, they can come up with, you know, uh, fun drawing or you know characters, um, reenact. Anyways, there's fun little things like so to get it in their mind of the, the idea of teaching it to a primary age child. This one um, has um, a couple of scriptures. So let's do um, 19 and 20. I'll have each of you, I'll get each of you two verses to talk about how Jesus Christ slays these monsters that are hard in our lives. So Brandon, how about if you do um, 2 Nephi 9, 19 and 20, and Kirsten, you do 21 and 22. Look for how the Savior can slay those monsters. Oh, the greatness of the mercy of our God, the Holy One of Israel. For he delivereth his saints from that awful monster, the devil, and death and hell, and that lake of fire and brimstone, which is endless torment. Oh, how great the holiness of our God. For he knoweth all things, and there is not anything save he knows it. What do you learn about the Savior in those verses? I think the omnis come in here is omnipresent, but omni omniscient and mm -hmm. omni, um, oh, I just lost last one. <laughs> omnipresent, omnipotent. omnipotent mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> he, he knows all things. He has all power. There's no monster that he can't mm -hmm. slay. And so if we can trust in him who knows all things and how to do it, he will help us not only overcome these two monsters, but our own fears and doubts and monsters that we have. 
what a great opportunity then to ask the students, what monsters has the Savior slayed in your life? Mm. We can have a discussion of that. Is it, does he help you to breathe when you're feeling anxious? Does he, what, whatever it is in your life. So for time, we won't, we won't do that, but what a great time. Okay. <laughs> so just so many good verses in there. We could just go on and on. So hopefully you can do that with your students. Let's move on now. I'm going to skip. Uh, there's so many great, the lessons are obviously are just great. So the one thing in Thursday's lesson that I thought might be fun and simple, it's about seeking blessings. It's in, it's 951. Hearken diligently. Don't spend your money for things which aren't, of no, which are of no worth and feast upon things. So I thought, what a great idea to get Think Celestial. Maybe cut this up and say, in what ways can you follow Jacob's counsel to hearken and to think celestial? So I might do that for my Thursday lesson and let them go over that and share. Um, another one did come to me. I remembered I taught this years ago. I, I, anyways, when you were just talking about monsters and the savior being that the hero, um, it is kind of fun to just say, okay, let's get into Disney. Let's get into Pixar for just a minute. Give me some famous monsters. And who's the, who's the hero of every one of them? Now we're going to introduce a couple other monsters from second Nephi nine. And now we're really going to introduce the hero. And even as you were going into 51, like you could just say, okay, here's the monster death and hell, but he's going to introduce other monsters, right? Um, People that don't know how to manage their finances. That's a monster for some people. Mm -hmm. um, people that live their life as though today is all that matters. That is a monster. YOLO, right? We call them. Anyways, it's just kind of fun to organize it under monsters and how Jesus is the hero. Thank you. That's a good one. Yeah, the lesson, going back, that, that lesson does have a T-chart if you want to, what life is like with the Savior and without. Mm. But adding the monster idea, I just it's more interesting for the kids, I think. And even focusing on the feasting upon the things that perish not, right? Mm -hmm. You could you could bring in something fun that way. And would you rather eat a cotton ball or would you rather eat cotton candy, right? <laughs> and yeah. do something about filling ourselves. Uh, cotton candy may not be the best choice. <laughs> nutritious, the more filling. <laughs> and it would get your students too hyped up. So don't yeah. do that. But <laughs> truly learning how to feast. I love how that word is over and over in the Book mm -hmm. of Mormon. It's a beautiful, powerful word. Thank you. The last day is the doctrinal mastery mm -hmm. review. So, so far we will have done three doctrinal masteries. Um, I don't know how people are doing that. There were some great ideas um, from Melanie that were on a few weeks ago, um, a list of things that you could do for review. Um, I did end up, I was inspired by the last few and I made some cards, uh, some flash cards that have taken me way longer than I thought they would, but the kids are really enjoying them. So I might use my cards this time and I might do one of the games that's kind of fun is to put all, I think Brandon, you told me this one, you put all the cards, all the doctrinal masteries in the middle, and then you say, as a review, you say a few key words, you know, like, um, joy. <laughs> and they'll Six go, oh, which one's the joy one? Yeah. And then so there's one, well, sorry, there's one set of cards. And then between two people, the one that gets the joy card, you know, it gets to keep it and then little prizes. That's a fun one. Another one that I thought maybe we could start applying some of these a little more is to have um, some some people act out scenarios <laughs> and then say, you know, here's the problem, which a doctrinal mastery would you use and have all the kids with their cards and they would hold up. I would use, I would use this doctrinal mastery because it, it helps the situation in this way. And you could have some discussions, a little less of a competition, maybe more of a discussion that way. That's Other awesome. ideas for reviews so far for this early in the year. I was thinking because I'm working on my flashcards as well, um, the heads up one, and see how many they can get, you know, put them in uh, partnerships or groups of four and they have to just hold it up. And so then they have three people giving them clues, but they can't use any of the words that are on that flashcard. So that makes it really hard. So they got to really work on their synonyms and antonyms and you know, prepare them for the SAT and ACT as well. <laughs> um, that's kind of a fun one using the flashcards as well. 
And that would be good because since we've only had three, you could kind of focus in on those a little bit and mm -hmm. or do all of them. You know, I'm I'm really grateful for this time that we get to just dive in. We all have monsters in our lives and they're different monsters at different times. And I testify that the Savior helps me to conquer all my monsters. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Stephanie. I always love being taught by you and by the Spirit. So thank you. And uh, I know it's a big block, not six through ten, five chapters, and they're long. But these are some powerful, powerful chapters on the scattering and gathering of Israel and how to overcome our monsters. So thank you for all your lesson helps. And uh, we'll make sure that Stephanie gets um, this PowerPoint and these ideas um, over to Kelly Anderson who then will put it a part of our page. So thank you again. Have a great week teaching, my friends.